Hey you guys, welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know I like to get into my introduction and disclaimer before starting with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and I am the founder and CEO of the Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, courses, videos, and review books to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. I have been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with a 99% pass rate in our comprehensive courses, as well as a 100% pass rate with our one-on-one -on -one sessions. Now, I always like to give the disclaimer and reminder that we know there's no absolutes in medicine and we treat on a patient-by-patient -patient basis. All questions that I have created here are based on the guidelines that are currently being tested on the NCC as well as AAMP exam. Um, but any videos that I do that are discussing what we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion, okay? All right, with that being said, let's get into question number one for today. After completing the fundoscopic exam, the nurse practitioner notes AV nicking. What is known to be the cause of AV nicking? Is it A, uncontrolled diabetes? Is it B, uncontrolled hypertension? Is it C, hyperlipidemia? Or is it D, a natural aging response? Take a moment and tell me what you had in the comments. All right, you guys, you know, I always recommend reading the stem of the question first so that it allows you to slow down and answer what is truly being asked. So here, the stem of the question states, what is known to be the cause of AV nicking? So is it going to be A, uncontrolled diabetes, B, uncontrolled hypertension, C, hyperlipidemia, or D, the aging response? So the key things you need to think about is, understanding what the actual cause is. And I'll get into it a little bit deeper. So let's just start from what we know because it's truly a knowledge-based um, question. So B, uncontrolled hypertension is the best answer. And I always say, y'all, when in doubt, typically, um, uh, more commonly, hypertension causes a lot of the eye issues, diabetes as well, but most commonly, hypertension does. And just thinking of truly how hypertension um affects the vessels in our bodies, right? Well, there's vessels in our eyes as well, so they're impacted, right? So when people have chronic uncontrolled hypertension, uh, you start to see various changes with the eyes. And AV nicking is exactly what it says. This is where, um, you know, the veins, they become small and they look like they're being nicked by the arteries. So basically where the arteries and veins cross, where uh, those veins look smaller and they become more compressed, that's where it's considered AV. And it's kind of hard to see until you really are able to identify what you're looking at because it just looks like vessels in the eye, right? But if you pay close attention to that actual like AV crossing area, what you would commonly see it called it's like the arterial venous crossing when you look at those areas you'll notice that it looks like the vein is being nicked by the artery and it's just where it's being compressed on both sides that makes it look like it's being nicked okay so again best answer is b uncontrolled hypertension and just think about it um you know, with hypertension, we will see like our hypertensive retinopathy. The retina is commonly uh, affected by this uncontrolled hypertension or this uncontrolled diabetes. And when we start to talk more on the lines of vessels, hypertension is classic for having those um, poor, poor side effects is what I should say. Like you commonly see the damage to the vessels from blood pressure. So I hope that kind of helps tie it all together for you guys. Um, try to paint a picture, but also explain the back end. Um, so just think of how blood pressure, in the simplest terms that I can think to explain it, just think of how blood pressure, um, what it really is, you know, and what we are looking at. And so with this increased and uncontrolled 
for a long period of time, those vessels, of course, are going to become damaged. And so when, you know, and it, when we look at AB nicking, those arteries and veins are so small, but when we go to that arterial venous crossing, uh, where that artery has thickened and it crosses with the vein, the vein becomes compressed and it appears like it's being nicked. Secondary to uncontrolled hypertension. That retinopathy, the retina, and all of this is all affected by hypertension and diabetes. But more specifically with AB nicking, always know uncontrolled hypertension, okay? All right, question number two. The nurse practitioner is reviewing the lab results of her anemic patient. She notes that MCV is 104 and MCHC is 34. No, not no noted neuro, that's a tongue twister. No noted neuro deficits on exam and the patient denies any complaints. What lab should the nurse practitioner obtain and review next to aid in diagnosing? Is it A, iron levels, B, the total iron binding capacity, C, folic acid levels, or D, TSH. Take a moment and tell me what you have in the comments, you guys. All right, so stem in the question states, what lab should the nurse practitioner obtain and review next to aid in diagnosing? So let's see what we have going on because it's asking you what should we do next, basically, um, to come up with a diagnosis. So what does that mean? We need to take it back and look at our assessment findings, right? So it says that the nurse practitioner is reviewing results of their anemic patient. So we know we have somebody with anemia. So we're looking at this MCV. MCV is 104. That is macrocytic, right? And then MCHC is 34. So that's normal chromate. So they say there's no neural deficits. Um, and the patient denies any complaints. So when you start to think of things that fall into that macrocytic normal chromic range, think of my 212 rule that I talk about with my anemias. If you haven't seen it, go look at it to kind of help you tie together if this is a difficult area for you. But the two that we think of that fall into that macrocytic normal chromic range are our B12 deficiency anemia and our folate deficiency anemia, right? So then you have to know how to differ between the two that present similarly, right? So remember that I, I always say, think about it like that. If we're differentiating it, B12 deficiency anemia, they present with neural deficits or complain of them or stated they may have that beefy red tongue, whereas with folate deficiency anemia, they do not, right? You assess that folic acid level. So the best answer here is C, folic acid, because you want to take it a step further to identify which it is. So that folic acid level will help you to determine B12 versus folate deficiency anemia, okay? All right, and question number three for today. A patient presents to the office with complaints of white discharge with noted odor. Upon examination, the nurse practitioner conducts a whiff test where a fishy odor is noted. Based on this information alone, what is the best diagnosis? Is it A, trichomonas, B, chlamydia, C, gonorrhea, or D, bacterial vaginosis. Take a moment and tell me what you have in the comments. All right, you guys, so step in the question states, based on this information alone, what is the best diagnosis? All right, so, um, you know, if we're trying to determine a diagnosis, we need to take it back and see what the assessment findings are. So this patient came in complaining of white discharge and an odor. The nurse practitioner conducts a whiff test and also knows the odor and states it's a fishy odor. So what are these key identifiers for? This is classic presentation of bacterial vaginosis, right? So your best cho answer choice is D, bacterial vaginosis. Y'all know I say it all the time, but those key identifiers you need to know. So when I say fishy odor, if I say whiff test, if I say clue cells, you say bacterial vaginosis, right? Make sure you know this stuff. So when I say this, you say that, right? So make sure you know those key identifiers so you're not missing this because they want to know on exams that if somebody presents with the most common uh, diagnoses with those right. classic presentations that you're able to quickly identify and know what you have in front of you, if we see this, you should know bacterial vaginosis. 
All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. If you need any of our resources, give us a phone call at 803-400-6864. You can also text that number or shoot us an email at the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. We offer review courses, being our self-paced review course that is all online. You can access from any device and you work through the flow on your own. You can watch it as many times as you like. It's broken down by each system for my FMP and my um, adult GRO uh, reviewers. Both um, It's designed for both ANCC and AAMP. There is a non-clinical section included with this. Um, and like I said, as it's broken down by system, it also has many quizzes associated with each system as well. Now, our five-week course, the next one starts June the 10th. For five weeks, we work through all of the systems, breaking down into small increments and reviewing and studying. And you'll have assignments Monday through Friday. Um, we do weekly live practice questions together as a group. And then on that last week of the full course, that is individualized. So I meet with each individual. We talk about the assignments that you have submitted, the feedback that I gave, the progress that I've seen, um, and gauge where you are, gauge your exam readiness, and tell you your next steps and advice that you need to do. Um, this is actually about to close because we're about full with our five-week enrollment. And then review books. There's an ebook option, paperback option, both linked in the bio of this channel. And then one-on-one -on -one sessions if you are looking for um, a plan, a custom package to help you go from unsuccessful to successful, just give us a call. We'd like to discuss that with you to gauge where you are, what your needs are, the duration that you're looking to review, and we customize a package to take you from unsuccessful to successful by looking at your weaknesses, by structuring a study plan, and working alongside with you to your successful test date. But as always, make sure y'all meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.